Welcome into episode 7 of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. I'm your host, Connor Rabchak. The Winnipeg Jets just wrapped up a 3-0 week. They're now on a four-game winning streak and the number one team in the NHL's Central Division. But the end of the week ended on a low note. Kyle Connor leaving the game with a right knee injury. Rick Bonus has yet to provide an update on whether or not it'll be a long-term injury, but you definitely don't want to see that for Winnipeg's leading scorer. As for the games, there was a lot to like from the wins. It started on Monday night as the Jets debuted their new alternate jerseys, the Fly the 48 Baby Blues. With the light brown gloves, I loved these jerseys personally, and the Jets came away with the win. This was a very weird game from start to finish. The Jets get outshot. I believe it was 13-0 to start the game. They didn't have a shot on goal. Lauren Brossois was fantastic. I'll get more into him in a second. But the Jets break the ice with their second shot of the game. Kyle Connor scores, and the Jets actually take a 1-0 lead after not getting a shot on goal for the first 16 and a half minutes of this game. And over the years, you know, they've been a playoff team many years in a row now. We know how Carolina likes to play. They like to throw a lot of pucks at the net. That was reflected in the 43 shots on goal. Lauren Brassois stopped 42 of them, and Winnipeg's defenders did a good job, you know, boxing out the front of the net, making sure Brassois could see. Not a lot of rebounds, not a lot of havoc in the crease, and it made for a clean 42 save performance from Lauren Brassois. Nikolai Ehlers scored the eventual game winner in this one, and the top line continued to roll. Kyle Connor with the goal, Nikolai Ehlers with the goal. Ehlers spoke after the game that he didn't even know how Shifley saw him on his goal. Shifley looked to be going around the net, and they just kind of fed it through the slot. Ehlers was uncovered and made no mistake. That top line is really feeding off of one another, and it makes Kyle Connor's injury hurt even more because they were really starting to hit their stride. Hopefully Connor's not out long term, and they can keep that momentum going. Then the Jets head to Colorado for their first matchup of the season against the Colorado Avalanche, who at the time were the number one team in the Central Division. And the Jets go in and win arguably their most impressive game of the season, beating the Avs on the road 4-2. Kale McCarr was playing, Bowen Byron was playing, these guys were previously missing time for Colorado. They were back active for this game and it didn't matter for Winnipeg. Kyle Connor scored two goals, Connor Hellebuck was fantastic, and the Jets came away with two points against a division rival leading the division. Now the Jets are leading the division, but this is, game is a huge reason why they're in the spot they are today. A big reason why Winnipeg won this game was because of the penalty kill. Colorado had a 5 on 3 in this game. They had a multitude of chances on the power play, but Hellebuck, the penalty kill, they were up to the task. I talked to Brendan Dillon over a month ago when the PK was really struggling about how they were going to fix it, what their plan is, and his answer to me was, it's a skill. Just like the power play, the penalty kill, you need to teach these new guys coming in how to run Winnipeg's system, and it seems like with Connor Hellebuck hitting his stride, the PK is also hitting their stride and that percentage is starting to skyrocket. And this game, they don't win this game if the penalty kill wasn't as good as it was. Uh, and they picked up a huge two points against Colorado on the road. One of the most impressive wins of the year for Winnipeg. And these two teams will meet again on December 16th when the Jets wrap up their road trip, their first game back home Saturday night against the Colorado Avalanche. They'll be looking for revenge. It should be a fun one inside Canada Life Center. And then the most recent game of the road trip, the Jets defeat the Anaheim Ducks 4-2, but most notably from this one, Kyle Connor leaves after Ryan Strom takes a 5-minute major for kneeing. Kyle Connor couldn't put any weight on his right knee, he had to be helped off the ice, and bonus said after the game there's no update on him and he'll be reevaluated Monday morning. Winnipeg notably looked flat after Kyle Connor went down with an injury, and you can't really blame them. I mean, their top scorer goes out, he can't put any weight on his leg, it doesn't look good. And we all remember that LA game when Gabriel Velarde went down with his MCL sprain and how flat the Jets looked after that injury. They looked flat in this one, but they were able to overcome it. And in the third period, they scored four straight goals. And of those four goals, the most notable, Gabriel Velarde scores the game winner, his very first as a Winnipeg Jet. A really nice deflection as he was coming across the crease, screening John Gibson, tips the puck through the five hole, and the Jets come away with the win. Morgan Barron scored a really nice goal in this one, and then Mark Shifley gets the empty netter. Connor Hellebuck once again was great. He wasn't tested with too many grade A chances, but when Winnipeg looked flat, like I said, after the injury, Hellebuck was up to the task, kept them in the game. 
Anaheim takes the early lead in the third, goes up 2-0, but then Winnipeg storms back four unanswered goals. Just incredible fight from this group and something that we haven't really seen in past years, but this was a true testament. Anaheim is now 1-11 in their last 12 games. This is a game that Winnipeg should have won, even with Kyle Connor going down to injury. And they took care of business. They've got San Jose up next. I'll get into the upcoming schedule later on in the episode, so stick around, but this was a great win for Winnipeg. Now it is time for the segments portion of the episode. If you're enjoying episode seven of Winnipeg Jets Weekly, make sure you drop a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss videos like this from Winnipeg Sports Talk. As always, we've got the hardest working jet and the three stars of the week. So let's get into it, starting with the hardest working jet of the week. Now this one might come as a surprise. I definitely surprised myself with this one a little bit, but Mark Shifley, his performance in the Avalanche game was arguably his best of the season and the effort is there. The first couple games of the year on Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily, Hassan Rumis and the guests all noted how Mark Shifley looked more motivated in all three zones. And that has continued, and in the biggest game of the year on the road, the best game of the year for Winnipeg, the top line center showed up in a huge way. He carried that into Anaheim, where his line mate, Kyle Connor, who he's been attached at the hip with for years now, goes down, and he still comes up big, playing big minutes down the stretch. I feel like his effort levels went unnoticed for too long in this series, so I'm giving Mark Shifley my hardest working jet of the week. Now, before we get into the three stars, let me know who you would have had as the hardest working jet of the week over Mark Shifley, or if you agree with my pick, and let me know your picks for three stars of the week. Let's get into it. My third star of the week is none other than Josh Morrissey. He had a fantastic game against the Avalanche with a goal and an assist, and he had the game winner, and it was the type of goals that we're used to seeing Morrissey score coming down off that left flank, going over the glove side, and he added another assist in that one, and in the Anaheim game, carried the momentum through. He was by far the best player on the ice in the Anaheim game. In the Colorado game, he got the game winner and added an assist, and then you go to the Anaheim game where he's a huge reason why the Jets were in that game in the first place and why they came back, scored four unanswered goals. Josh Morrissey's my third star of the week on Winnipeg Jets Weekly. My second star of the week is Nikolai Ehlers. He had the game-winning goal in the first game of the week against Carolina, and then set up Kyle Connor for a goal in the Avalanche game, and just looks back to his usual dynamic self. I said it last week, I'll say it again. He had the slow start, he's completely past that, and this is the Nikolai Ehlers we're used to seeing. He's up to 16 points on the year with seven goals and nine assists in 26 games, and he's gonna have to carry the load offensively if Kyle Connor misses any amount of time. The top line was well represented on this episode of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. Shifley's the hardest worker, Ehlers is the second star, and I'm sure you can already guess who the first star is. The first star of the week is none other than Kyle Connor. He had the goal against Carolina, he had two goals against Colorado, and then had his night cut short against Anaheim. Obviously the Jets, the Jets organization and their fans are all hoping that this injury is not long term and he can get back as soon as possible. But if he is out for any amount of time, a lot of players are going to have to step up in that top six. I tweeted out during the game that Cole Perfetti could be a guy if they elevate his ice time. Gabriel Velarde could be a guy and he scored the game winner. So he's already on track to replacing some of the offense that'll be left behind if Kyle Connor misses time. And the second star of the week, Nikolai Ehlers is another guy. He's going to get minutes on that top line with Mark Shifley. And he's going to have to put up points in Kyle Connor's absence. 28 points in 26 games before the injury. 17 goals was among the NHL's leaders in goals. And 102 shots on goal. He throws a lot of pucks on net. By far leading the Jets in that category. That's a lot of offense to replace and how the Jets are going to proceed with or without him going forward. I jokingly renamed this award the Kyle Connor Award a few episodes ago and he's winning it again here. The first star of the week, Kyle Connor on Winnipeg Jets Weekly. Last but not least, let's get into the upcoming schedule for the Winnipeg Jets. And we've got a few late starts this week. December 12th, that's a Tuesday night against the San Jose Sharks. That one starts at 9.30 p.m. Central. And then the very next night, another 9.30 p.m. Central start against the Los Angeles Kings. And I think it's safe to say that game against the LA Kings is going to feature a lot of emotion from both sides. Obviously, Gabriel Velarde over six months ago was hurt against the LA Kings. Blake Lazat, kind of an awkward fall in the corner. 
If you asked Gabe Velarde, he would disagree with that statement, but there's obviously some bad blood there. A revenge game still for Ayafalo, Velarde, and obviously Pierre-Luc Dubois on the LA side of things. And LA is one of the best teams in the Western Conference, so that's going to be a great game. Second night of a back-to-back, -back, I would guess that Lauren Brassois will go the first night against the Sharks and then Hellebuck the second night, but we'll wait for confirmation from Rick Bonus. And that brings the Jets back home on Saturday night, the game I alluded to earlier, a rematch against the Colorado Avalanche December 16th. That one goes at 6 p.m. And then the rest of the four-game homestand features original six opponents. Monday night, you get the Montreal Canadiens. Wednesday night, you get the Detroit Red Wings. And then not pictured there, Friday night, you get the Boston Bruins. I'll be back next week to dive into those games with more depth and break down what happened in the Sharks, Kings, and Avalanche games. So come back next week for episode eight of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. Thank you for tuning into episode seven of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. I really do appreciate the support. Make sure you drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and you'll be notified when Huss and Remus go live on Monday to break down the Jets' 4-2 win. Talk about the Kyle Connor injury. By that time, we should have some news as to the severity of the injury. So make sure to tune into that. And I'll see you next Monday for Episode 8 of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. Have a great week, everyone.